The Monerotopia Price Report segment is sponsored by Local Monero. Avoid using KYC exchanges. Buy and sell Monero directly for fiat peer to peer. Oh, Khalid, All right. take it away, my yeah, friend. We, we definitely have had some nice price action happening. You can see we've got uh, four green candles. Some people might even try and call these last three green weekly candles the three green soldiers. Um, they're supposedly uh, good, good price action, good price news. It, you know, supposedly they they represent more positive price action. Um, I'm not sure that I really ever bought into the three green soldiers or the three red soldiers, but uh, you know, it's 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 kind of there. Usually, you would want to see that after like a reversal on the bottom. Um, but at any rate, uh, the weekly's nice. Um, yeah, like. Effectively, this was just like the whole delisting thing was kind of like a double bottom for us, right? We we bottomed back in, in 2022 with everything else. And uh, they said, hey, we can do some more fuckery with the price. Uh, let's delist it from Binance. Um, and then we kind of just double bottomed and then rebounded back to uh, back to like regular, effectively our normal stable coin levels, right? 150, 160. Um, yeah, we tagged uh, just above 170 this week. Let's switch down here to the daily. Um, we tagged 170 yesterday and then had a bit of a pullback and then it came, it came right back. Kind of interesting action. If you ask me this, this big wick and then down, um, the fact that we've come back today just so rapidly is a very good sign because that kind of wick action, um, sometimes you would look at that and say, Hey, that's a, that's a hammer, right? You might, you might in some cases say that's a hammer, but, but the follow through that happened today to, to come back, um, kind of invalidates the notion that that's a hammer still at the same time, maybe there could be some resistance coming up. Um, let's go ahead and put on the wave magic here. Again, wave magic is just standard deviations, um, rather moving standard deviations. So um, obviously, we all know the concept of the moving average. Hopefully, you can see these white lines right here. If you can't, make sure that on your YouTube, you have switched to 1080p. Sometimes they'll downgrade you to like 480p, and then these, these charts are super fuzzy. Oh, I will also zoom in on my charts so that maybe it's easier for you to see. Anyways, so you got the white lines here, and these are all moving standard deviations. Imagine overlaying every single moving standard deviation from like the five period all the way up to the 5,000 period. We're on the daily, so in this case, that would be like the five day to the 5,000 day, um, which is longer than the lifetime of the chart. So Anyways, what, what you see is this clustering. Um, it was kind of interesting when I first had this idea and then programmed it in there. And this is what popped out. And I said, wow, this is beautiful. This look, looks kind of like a fractal. Look, uh, it's kind of like a natural process, which is um, why we use it. It's effectively, the, so the upper lines here, the blue lines, those are moving upper standard deviations. And the orange lines are moving lower standard deviations. So if any of you are slight math nerds out there and you understand what standard deviation is, you'll understand that it's it's a fundamental statistical concept that we use to see when something is trending. Um, they're, they're useful. It's, it, this is not like the regression analysis, which is like hard mathematical statistical proof that this equation is better than chance and better than other equations. Um, it's more of just like a map in my mind, it's a map of, um, of sentiment. It's a map of, of what people are kind of like, cause people intuitively, they can like, they really do intuitively feel when something is. Trend. Um, this is just kind of a way for us to visualize it um, in, in a way that's useful. So, um, yeah, we're looking at the wave magic here, and you can see these these um, fairly long term bands now that we've been in since. God, let's just keep scrolling back. Really, since about right here. So they started forming 2023, um, and you'll notice that yeah, we kind of hit some resistance there. Um, the longer, let's go to a little bit longer time frame, maybe on the two day chart. You'll notice here um, that if we if we zoom out a bit onto the two day chart. Uh, you can see a few more clustering um, points of interest. So right here, I don't know how well you can see that, but this is also moving average, right? But this is a much longer term moving average than these guys right here. These are shorter term moving averages. So um, effectively, what I would expect is some level of resistance to happen in this area, right? From from the top of that moving average and upper um, upper standard deviation bands um, to, to this level right here. So that's, that's really what I would expect. Honestly, without the delisting, um, <laughs> you know, it's kind of hard to say because the delisting hurt short term in the price, but, um, you know, that kind of reduces their fractional reserve capabilities. So um, maybe all this short term washout is what we needed to actually finally break above the level that we've been capped at for the past, mm, let's just say year and a half, two years. So, um, yeah, overall, it's it's looking like, um, you know, the theory is is starting to look like it's following or sorry, reality is starting to look like it's following the theory. Um, I still think that other exchanges out there probably do have fractional reserve. Hopefully we can just crack in, but we can't really know for sure, can we? Um, they are probably, you know, they're, they, they've got to they've got to obey the U.S. government in certain to some degree. Right. They've got to they've got to acquiesce to the regulators from time to time. So 
Um, yeah, this is the this is the uh, the divergences from all the exchanges relative to Kraken. So, if hypothetically it's the case that Kraken is now doing some fractional reserve, um, I'm not again. I'm not saying they are. I'm not saying we have any evidence for it. I'm not even speculating that they are. I'm just saying just keep in mind that it could happen. Right? They're not like they're not they're not the Virgin Mary like sanctified in in the blood of Christ here uh, for for the Monero's price. They 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 they, they it could happen that uh, maybe maybe they aren't every you know as perfect as we would hope they are. At any rate, um, we're looking at the price diverg divergences here from all of these exchanges relative to Kraken. Nothing interesting to see on this chart, really. Even Poloniex um, lately is is uh, is showing some kind of relative um, oscillation around the zero point, which is what this chart should be. Like in an honest market, you should generally see this chart should just be noise, basically. Um, but OK, uh, enough about the fractional reserve that looks like it's coming to an end. Um, in, in large part due to the valiant efforts of so many of the people providing the um, uh, the decentralized platforms for us to be able to trade, um, to get into Monero and out of Monero and, uh, and, and into all their other types of coins. Uh, okay. So here's the Monero gold chart. And I wanted to show you guys this chart today because, um, I thought it was interesting how well, um, this demonstrates the standard deviations, how well they can hold up sometimes. Um, especially when you remove the dollar from the equation. So we've taken Monero and we've divided it by gold. Um, which effectively removes the dollar from the equation, and we just get Monero's price, uh, Monero priced in gold, or gold priced in Monero if we flip the chart upside down. Anyways, um, in a lot of cases, the dollar, uh, and I think uh, the, the fiat paradigm can introduce different kinds of fuckery specifically because of, um, uh, you know, their ability to add liquidity to the markets in certain places whenever they feel like, and just sometimes introduce noise into the equation. Uh, so interestingly, this very long-term Monero versus gold chart uh, as Monero was bottoming here versus gold established this long-term lower standard deviation band. We had the bull market and then we've come back uh, and then retraced. And then right here is, is exactly where things seem to have found support. Now, could this chart go down further? Could this thing do this number? Yeah, that, that could happen. Um, but uh, again, interesting, like no one is looking at the Monero versus gold chart, right? No one is looking at this chart and saying, oh, let me buy the lower standard deviation, right? Like I, I probably no one is looking at that. Very few people, not enough to make to like for it to be a social impact on this price um, or on this chart. So I do think that there is something to this whole wave magic thing. I think I think there's something to standard deviation analysis. Um, I see it work more often than not. It's not perfect. Like all technical analysis, like all statistical analysis, it is not perfect. You have to understand the limitations and you want to use it in concert with the rest of the things that you're looking at. Um, so in an ideal sense, we would we would hope that Monero would uh, at least find some kind of stabilization here. Try and uh, try and tag these upper standard deviation bands again. Um, but I, I thought the Monero versus gold uh, chart was interesting for for the way that we found down there. Um, kind of same thing here with the with the crypto uh, with the Monero uh, versus the crypto market cap dominance or Monero's dominance versus the rest of crypto. Um, looks like we kind of found a bottom here. Uh, unsurprising because we had talked about with Bitcoin that you know for really for months now we had talked about after the delisting this is a bottoming pattern. This thing is ultimately going to come back to the upside at some point here. And at least test this range. Um, that it could, you know, could be sooner, could be later. At the moment, things look positive. Nothing goes up in a straight line, guys. So, you know, um, don't necessarily expect to to put the dollar signs in your eyes or the Monero signs in your eyes um, just yet. But um, I mean, things are looking good. Things are looking positive, right? Take a win when you got one. Um, okay, so let's go to the broader crypto market now. And what we can do here is take a look at all the shit coins. Uh, obviously, shit coins minus. Um, this one right here in red, uh, that one is the only non shitcoin on the chart. That one's the only non shitcoin in the entire ecosystem. Ah, eh, just kidding. I don't want to be a fucking uh, moon boy degen like that. Anyways, um, yeah, Monero still, you can see here the red, it's performing well relative to its own moving average. That's what this chart is. It looks at every coin. How is it performing relative to its own moving average? In this case, that would be the 100 day moving average. Uh, everything's kind of like slowly bleeding off. Somehow BNB has managed to to pull something, pull a little rabbit out of the hat for the past week. Okay, um, sure, B and B, sure, Binance, uh, whatever. You guys are regulated, wholly sanctified now. So um, you know, maybe they can, uh, <laughs> maybe they got to take their pumps when they can get them. Maybe it's harder for them to orchestrate those scam pumps now um, that they've got to obey more rules. Uh, let's see. Let's go to Bitcoin. I decided to um, to to play around with this chart a little bit. We're on the daily, right? So this is the daily time frame. Um, Let's take a, a broader look here at this bull market. Um, I mean, we can we can call this a bull market. 
kind of <laughs> technically we haven't really broken the all-time high right like if we go to the monthly candles like okay we closed a month above then then below and then um and then we're still like we still have not closed another month above the previous all-time high maybe that can happen this month looks like we're we're still early on in, in, in this month anyways um the we'll just call it a a foregone bull market or a foregone conclusion of a bull market. Uh, yeah. So this line right here is nice. Um, that that's basically been a, a, a reasonably like tracking line, except for this, uh, this area right here where things were uncertain. Um, anyways, things are well above that. Um, the thing that I really wanted to point out here was I redrew, I drew this line right here, another pleb line. This is basically like a capping line. Like, okay, you could, you could put a, you could drop a horizontal line right here and say, okay, that's the previous all time high at about 73,000, something dollars, whatever. Um, the other thing that you can do is, is draw. We wouldn't have been able to draw this line necessarily until we experienced this resistance as of the past. Um, I don't know, I guess that would be two or three weeks now. So this is why drawing lines is so fucking dubious because you can see like, Oh, we could have, we could have put the start of this line right here. And then we could have tried to draw this thing maybe like that and say, ah, that's our valid line. Or maybe we could draw it like that. Right. Cause we're, we're catching that wick there and say, well, yeah, but then we broke it there. Um, so just know that like this is this is a fluid game of um, of degeneracy and sometimes stupidity. At the moment, this is the most, and, and I, I like this kind of way of doing it. This is the most shallow way you could draw this line, basically. Maybe we could go to the weekly and try and draw it even more shallow than that. That, that looks more like noise than anything. But notice that we've the daily close is where we put that line, and then we try to connect the wick and then the wick and the wick there, right? So this is kind of like the most shallow way you could draw this line. So breaking day above this line and then holding that for one more day right this is another little trick you can use with pleb lines that helps you helps you not get taken on fake breakouts if we break if bitcoin breaks this line here at some point and then it the next day it holds above that little pleb line that's probably a good sign that things are ready to finally start moving towards the upside again um i'm not saying that's about to happen right this thing could just trend sideways for a period of time who knows right probably the market is waiting for the ethereum etf to get approved um i would i would suspect that's that's a big deal on the market's mind right because then you got bitcoin approved then ethereum etf gets approved and th that'll draw some some new money in right and some of that bitcoin etf money is going to flow into the eth etf much to the chagrin of um of all the maximalists out there sorry bros but that's just like how shit that's just shit, how shit goes um, but then after that, like there's probably after the Ethereum ETF, there's probably very little new money coming into the stock market, um, spot ETFs for crypto, regardless of which new crypto gets added. Um, right. There's only so far that, um, that that psychology can be leveraged. So, um, yeah, but I mean, you know, the market's still probably waiting for that ETF. They're waiting for that, that thumbs up signal. Hey, it's okay. The government says that crypto is not scary anymore. Um, luckily we got Monero to make crypto scary again. Uh, for all of those criminals in the government. Okay, um, this is the Ethereum versus BTC chart. This is something I've called for, it's got to be like a year or two now. Ethereum, is, I still think it's going to make market cap parity with Bitcoin. Um, one thing that I thought was interesting, we're on the weekly chart here. You can see right here, these are the standard deviations. So again, we're looking at, oh, um, well, actually, you know what? I'm ahead of myself. Why don't we Why don't we stop here? Why don't I delete some lines? And then let's take a look at the, at the long-term chart, right? So this is the Ethereum weekly. I redrew some pled lines. So um, let's, where is it? Yeah, here we go. Let's um, let's mute the short term, right? Just to get your bearings here. Um, I have this this kind of horizontal uh, dotted line right there. That that may or may not be, you know. Let's just let's just delete that for now. It's probably not important. Okay. So there's this big like kind of lifetime triangle in the Ethereum Bitcoin chart. It broke down, and uh, you know maybe it's maybe it's going to be able to get back. I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I think it's gonna, right? Obviously, that's what I just said. So let's mute that and let's go to the short term because I drew some new short term lines. Um, we can probably go to the daily while we're at it. All right, we'll go to the three day. Uh, so effectively, this is a falling wedge. And I, I kind of like, I redrew this chart because of the recent action that happened with Ethereum versus Bitcoin. Um, it's a relatively clean chart. If we go to the weekly, you'll see that it looks a bit more clean. Say, okay, forget all the wicks down there. Let's just try and match up the weekly close prices, basically close, you know, effectively. Um, somewhere in that in that neighborhood. Another thing that I'll do is like if you have multiple wicks um, that are like down, 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 I'll kind of consider that a weekly close. Because like if you just get one weekly wick that wicks all the way down here, but then nothing else came near it, like, okay, that's just a wick, right? That's just volatility. 
um, bottom volatility. But if you have a weekly that closes there and then there's a wick down there and then there's another wick down there, you kind of say, well, okay, this is technically the weekly close was right. You'd say technically the weekly close is right. Yeah. But you, you could call the weekly close right there too. Um, again, it's like, just know like there's uh what was his name uh monero mon uh he's not here in the chat but he always used to complain about pleb lines and he's not wrong like he's not wrong anyways um this is this is kind of like a a, a descending wedge here um this thing i i think will ultimately break to the upside that just seems to be what makes the most sense to my pleb brain um but let's go to the wave magic and see what we're seeing on the ethereum versus bitcoin chart here um so these are moving averages right this is um, fairly long-term moving averages over the past couple of years. You can see these, this white cluster, right? All of that, that clustering area there. Um, and you'll notice, interestingly enough, that's where things so far have found support. Now, this chart doesn't tell you that it's going to be the support, right? It, it can't tell you that, but it does tell you, hey, that was a place that you might expect support. So when you wicked down there, if you're a DGEN trader that watches the markets closely every day, you would see this wick into this very long-term moving average cluster and say, hey, that's a buying opportunity. I could swing trade that shit for, you know, 15%, um, you know, until it gets like just, you know, recovers back to that lower area there. Um, and that's the kind of stuff that volatility is made out of, right? There's There are people that actually do this. I'm not one of them. I feel like it's kind of a waste of life and there's better things to do with uh, with your time than staring at charts all day, but uh, yet I digress. So um, right now on a little bit shorter term, um, we are still seeing Ethereum uh, versus Bitcoin, right? The ratio um, being stopped out at some kind of obvious wave magic levels in combination with the pled line level, right? This was a pretty strong area to think, hey, that's resistance right there, um, just based on on the way that the lines converged. Um, unfortunately, I don't think last week I had actually drawn like redrawn this chart. Um, believe it or not, I don't pay a, a whole lot of attention to the Ethereum versus Bitcoin price, um, just in the long term. You know, in the sense that hey, I know this thing is is likely um, going to going to outperform at some point here. Um, let's see. Uh, we could take a look at the other stable coins. I feel like that's something that um, you know something that we're adding to our. <laughs> Uh, to our weekly repertoire, and uh, we had talked about Xano last week, actually. Remember, we said, hey, um, this looks like a bottoming pattern. It looks like Xano is finding a bottom here, and uh, it has come up to the tune of 31%. So I don't know if um, <laughs> maybe some of the listeners on that show, because uh, this is low liquidity, right? We could actually, on the show, probably influence the Xano liquidity and influence the Xano price. Um, so this this could have potentially been um, just kind of us chit-chatting about the Xano price, or you know, maybe it had nothing to do with that. I don't know. Um, I, like I said, the, the, this is a good example of where wave magic gives you areas, but isn't perfect, right? We didn't get all the way down to, um, to the, to the, that, uh, standard deviation area or sorry, to the, to the moving average area at within 5%, you know, that, that's, it's pretty good. I mean, after you've, after you've topped out here and you fall a total of 60%, yeah, okay. You know, from the difference between 59% there and 61%, right? So we got pretty close to touching those lines. Again, they're good references. If you're like, if you're really a trader of this kind of stuff, what you do is you set levels. You're like, okay, I'm going to buy, I'm going to start buying here and then I'm going to buy again here, 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 and then here, right? If you're like, if you decide you want to get into a Xano position, what you'll do is probably you'll acquire a little bit, a little bit, and a little bit so that you make sure that you at least get some position if the market decides to bottom and then reverse before you actually get to your, you know, your, your hardcore target. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, Xano's, Xano's looking good. XMR. Oh no, I hit a button, hit the wrong button. There we go. All right. XMR versus Zcash. <laughs> I can't even bring myself to just look at the Zcash chart by itself. Uh, but anyways, we're, we're headed back to all-time highs versus Zcash. Zcash is going to all-time lows versus Monero. Um, that's just like, that's just how it's going to be. Mm, let's take a look at what Coinbase says about Zcash price. No, that's not a good chart. Um, probably Kraken. They usually have good prices. Yeah, they, Kraken for uh, so if you're like trying to find the, the lifetime history of charts, Kraken is a really good place to start. They're one of the best places. If you're looking for like total shit coins, like absolute shit coins, then look at the Tether pair on Binance. That typically has like the longest, um, like the longest uh, timeline for for like the obscure shit coins. Usually their timeline is post 2018. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, Zcash versus US dollar. This is what you would expect a chart to do, where they take so much, um, where they squeeze so much founder juice out of it. Wait, um, hey, Darrow, hey, Darrow, hey, well. Hey. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Hey, sorry to jump in there. I just got Luke. I'm gonna bring up pretty pretty shortly. Okay. Um, so let me know how much how much more you got. Just Not much, man. I can me. I can be out in like three minutes. Word, perfect. All right. All right. So forget about Darrow. Uh, I don't know. They came back this week. Whatever. Who cares? 
Mm, last thing we should just touch on is the macro. We should always keep your broader context of what is the rest of the market doing, um, you know, because nothing exists in isolation. Um, global liquidity affects everyone, including NVIDIA. <laughs> NVIDIA is the real winner here out of all the, of, of all the stocks, but we're not going to talk about them. Um, so dollar index uh, has made a little bit of a comeback. Let's go to the daily. The dollar index has made a big bump on Friday. Like this just came out of nowhere. Big bump to the upside on Friday. Uh, but still like still well below those swing highs that it made. Um, OK, th this is still effectively a stable chart trending sideways. Um, the dollar index, um, that that bump did cause gold to um, to take a drop here. And if you remember last week, I said, yeah, this is looking a little bit toppy. I'm not I wasn't not liking the feel of where gold is here. It might need to take some kind of pullback um, before it continues on to anything higher. There's so much fuckery with the gold chart. Like who's to say that it's going to continue higher? They could they could stall this thing for months. Um, the reverse repos are sitting here flat, same as always. So that's kind of, again, it's a neutral signal. Um, quickly on the stock market. Uh, basically, so that, that's, um, uh, oh man, that's a dirty chart. I, I was playing around with the, uh, with the regression analysis and some upper boundary stuff. Let's just turn that off for now. Uh, yeah. So that, that candle that I told you guys about that daily candle that was, um, a, a bearish engulfing. And I said, Hey, it's dangerous to try and call to call the stock market down uh, like ever. Um, so this is a perfect example. That is a massive bearish engulfing pattern that effectively worked for a week and then stopped working. So, um, yeah, I mean, it looks like the, the game is just going to continue. I think mostly it's just that people see, Hey, there's no tail risk right now. So people want to stay in the market when, when in doubt, stay in the market. When it comes to stock markets, when in doubt, you stay in the market, they say, Hey, the tail risk is not like sharp. There's nothing scary happening here. So people are still just staying in the market, right? That's just what they're doing. Um, let's see, uh, Monero hash rate. Let's just take a look at the transactions per day since we skipped over that a second ago. Uh, yeah, still sitting here oscillating between 30 and 40. Um, so things are looking good overall. The, there's nothing scary in the macro liquidity situation. Um, things look towards the upside. Crypto is having some, uh, it's a little bit of trouble, but, uh, but the macro is still looking good that the crypto crypto should follow along at some point when the ETH Ethereum, uh, ETF actually goes live, but who gives a fuck about that come um, you know monero is actually performing quite well uh and having recovered from all of the price fuckery currently recovering from the price fuckery so um really hoping to see this chart maybe take a little pause here for a moment that would be healthy and then watch hopefully monero um, push its way back up to the 200 dollars range uh so that's it i'm i really want to hear what luke has to say so uh i'm out later guys